Hello and welcome to another House of Wisdom Knife Review video. This video is just for you guys. Whenever I was showing the video on my knife storage system, you guys said that you'd like me to do a review of my current collection of knives, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm not going to do the whole collection in one video because I don't want to make a 30 minute video and bore you guys to death, so I'm going to try to do it in two or three parts. This is the first part. My knife collection is ordered alphabetically, so we're going to try to get through the B's and C's, do the the Benchmaids, the Begs, the Bokers, the Browses, and uh, maybe the Chris Reeves and get through the uh, B's and C's at least. We'll see how far we get. Like I said, I, out of courtesy to you guys, I don't want to make it too long. So we'll get started with the Benchmaids. This is the Benchmade Benchmite, and it's a flash from the past. This knife is no longer in production. It has something called a levitator lock. You press on this button and it lifts the lock and then you can release the blade. It locks both in the open position and the closed position. The steel of this blade is OS8. The blade length is 1.92 inches. It's a small blade and it only weighs one ounce, has no lanyard hole, no clip. It's just designed to sit in your pocket and bounce around in there. So that's the Benchmade Benchmite, a flash from the past. Here's another flash from the past. It's one of the small knives that Benchmade used to make. It's called the Aphid. I really love this knife. It's so light you can hardly feel it. It's got a blade of 2.38 inches and it weighs 1.65 ounces. It's uh, got one of the old steels, 440C. Remember it's no longer in production. And it's one of the assisted locks. It's got a liner lock. It has a plastic handle. And this is a guy that just flips on out there. It's a lot of fun. The next knife in the collection is going to be the Benchmade 485 Valet. The Valet has a 2.96 inch blade. It weighs 2.18 ounces. This has a higher grade steel. It's Bowler M390. They did swedging on the top of the blade to make it lighter. They have liners that are skeletonized and uh, they did a great job of keeping this at 2.18 ounces. It got a G10 handle. It's a lovely blade. Look at the loop over pocket clip too. Love those loop over deep carry pocket clips. The next blade is a Benchmade 527 Mini Presidio. And it has a 2.97 inch blade. It weighs 3.1 ounces. This is the old version. It came in a 440C. Benchmade has recently released the Mini Presidio 2 and they're making it with an aluminum handle and an upgraded steel of S30V, so look forward to that. This is the Mini Presidio. It is very similar in size and form to the Mini Griptilian. I'm gonna put them here side by side. The handle on the Mini Presidio is maybe a little bit larger than the Mini Griptilian. Next in line is the Benchmade 470 emissary. It's got a three inch blade, weighs 2.2 ounces. It employs S30V steel. Uh, this blade is a barrel of monkeys. It's one of the only bench maids that's got assisted, but it's got this nice little ramp on the aluminum handle that guides your finger right to that thumb stud and you just barely touch it and it flies out. Much to do has been made over. If you have an axis lock, is it really necessary to have an assisted thing? The answer is probably no, but you know what? It is a lot of fun to deploy, even though it's a little harder to retract. It has that deep carry loop over clip, just like the uh, Valet. The next knife is the uh, Benchmade 531 Pardue. This used to be one of the lightest and best of Benchmade's collections until the bug out came. Bug out came. Uh, in the 530, which came out originally, it had a spear point blade. It weighed 1.88 ounces. This has a high flat ground blade and is a little heavier at 2.1 ounces. I wanted to go with flat ground blade because the uh, spear point blade was famous for not being a very cut, good cutter, but this is a three and a quarter inch blade that is really light, uh, 2.1 ounces. Great knight. It uses 154 CM steel. And this is one of the iconic knives of Benchmade. It's the Mini Griptilian. I got the tan handle with the blacked out blade. It comes in a sheep's foot blade or a drop point blade. The sheep's foot employs a 
uh, spider hole kind of deployment thing, and I really like this. Of the knives I have, this has one of the best actions. It's just drop shut. My kid got this to me as a, a birthday present a long time ago. This is the first knife I cost I got that ever cost a hundred dollars, and I remember thinking it was pretty opulent to do something like that. But uh, I've gotten over that since. <laughs> And the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. The Mini Griptilian has a 2.91 inch blade, is 2.86 ounces, uses 154 cm steel. About $100 worth. Next on the list is the Benchmade 707 Sequel. The Benchmade 707 Sequel uh, has a 2.95 inch blade, it weighs 2.6 ounces. Think of this as a mini griptilian except with an aluminum handle because they're similar in all the rest of the specs. It has a little bitty grippy overlay here on both sides and it has a parkerized clip. This is a great blade. It's also a, a McHenry and Williams design just like the Benchmite, the, uh, yeah, the sequel. Next is another iconic one. This is one of everybody's favorite. This is the Benchmade. 940-1 Osborne. I wanted to get it in the carbon fiber, which is the dash one part, and it is great. It's got uh, the reverse tanto blade. This particular knife is in S90V. Um, excuse me. It is, yeah, it's in S90V, CPM S90V. It weighs 2.44 ounces and has a 3.4 inch blade. And even though it's a longer blade, you hardly notice because it's uh, so light and thin. It's got that beautiful reverse Tonto blade and uh, just really like this knife a lot. And the last one in my Benchmade collection is the Bug Out. It just came out this year. The Bug Out is three and a quarter inch blade. It weighs 1.8 ounces. So we're getting as far as length goes. This is one of the lightest knife per length that Benchmade has ever had. It has plastic handles, got that great axis lock action. Uh, deep carry loop over clip. Gee, what's there not to like about this if you like night, light knives? And uh, the steel it uses is the S30V. Moving along through the Bs, we have the Todd Beggs Mini Bodega. It has a 3 inch blade, it weighs 3.7 ounces. This is one of the most machined knives uh, that you'll ever find. It has all of this CNC work with the shell pattern. It has these fine lines there. And then on the back here, it has a gold machined backspacer. The clip has a cracked ice finish. There's a cracked ice finish also. I don't know if you can see it, but on the inside there. And the blade has a two-toned uh, blade. Oh, it's just a really overdone opulent flipper knife. And the flipper is very good too. Uh, that's the... Todd Beggs Mini Bodega comes in at 3.7 ounces. The next one is the Boo's Mini Arrow. The Mini Arrow is a 3 inch blade. It weighs 1.98 ounces. It uses S35 V in steel and love this knife. It has a carbon fiber inlay. It has blue anodized titanium handles. It's got a floating back spacer. Got a clip that has these stylized forward leaning uh, rectangles and it has this thumb hole that's very distinctive it's thin you can do a third uh, finger flick out it is a great blade and one of my favorite things about the booze is the little dog uh, he puts on there his collie dog I like that maker's mark so that's the booze blade mini arrow moving along this is the Ericus Blumeris LL7 flipper. It has a blade that is three and three eighths inches. It weighs four and a quarter ounces. It uses N690 steel. This particular knife has a zirconium bolster that has anodization work. It has a G10 handle with these mother of pearl inlay deer track looking things. It's got some nice tooling work on the uh, back of the knife and it has a red G10 liner. The clip is a press clip. It uses a ceramic ball, uh, and this is a really well-made knife. It has a great flipping action. He's a good friend of Thorburn, and uh, they must compare notes because their knives are really high-class, high-quality knives. That's the Blumetis LL7. 
We're getting into now the um, Boker knives. This is the A2 Mini. This was my gate gateway drug for front flippers. It has a 2.89 inch blade with a 2.3 ounce total weight. It uses VG10 as the blade steel. This is one of those uh, high front flippers that you can reach over and deploy like that. You can also use your thumb, although the index finger is the best way to deploy this one, I think. This is a, a great knife. It comes in a little less than $100. So if you want to try one of the front flipper styles, I recommend this. It's a great knife made by Boker. The next Boker knife I have is an Boker Plus Anti-Gravity. It's got a three and a quarter inch blade. It weighs 2.1 ounces. This is one of the few ceramic knives that I have in my collection. And ceramic knives stay sharp. They have a great hardness scale, but they can chip a little bit. This one hasn't yet, but they're great slicers. And uh, everybody ought to have a ceramic blade knife in their, in their collection. This has a, a carbon fiber scales and a, a deep carry loop over clip. And one of the lightest and best of my whole collection is this Boker. Uh, it is the Urban Trapper Mini Petite. It is 2.75 inch blade. It weighs 1.0 ounce. The blade is VG10 and it costs less than $100. I think this one costs $85. It's a great little blade and it disappears in your pocket. It's got a deep carry loop over clip. It's a wonderful little knife. Moving along, we're going to get into the Browses now. This is the Browse Razorback. It has a three inch blade and it weighs 2.5 ounces. It uses D2 steel like most of the Browse knives. And uh, look at the beauty of that blade, that compound grind. And it is completely beautiful. It has this arc line going through it and it's also on the handle there. Uh, love that knife. It is a beautiful, interesting knife. And the next Browse knife I have is the Spectre. This knife I got at Blade 2017, but it's now come out on the market. It's a 3-inch blade, weighs 3.1 ounces. It uses D2 steel again. This is a simple knife. It has a pivot, one standoff. The clip side is stainless steel, so it doesn't need a lock bar insert. The pivot collar acts as the over-travel stop. This is like one of the most perfect designs in its simplicity that you could ever make. The handle on this one is G10. Next is the Browse Bionic 2. It again has a 3 inch blade and weighs 2.5 ounces. It's made of D2 steel and it has this reptilian thing like the spine of a reptile here. It has a blackened blade and it has a fuller on the blade. Just a great knife. The next Browse blade is the Browse Turpin collaboration called the Insight. It has a three and a quarter inch blade and weighs 4.9 ounces. It again has D2 steel like all the Browse knives. I think he's gonna move on from D2 steel, but as of today, he hasn't. It's a really great knife. The next knife is the Burger Atlas Flipper. It has a blade that is 3.15 inches, weighs 3.15 ounces. It has M30 steel. This is a great knife. It has this carbon fiber handle with a bolster that's titanium. It has blue anodized uh, uh, liners. It is a beautiful knife and has a beautiful action. It's just one of those South African smooth knives. It's just a joy to play with. The Atlas is also made in a frame lock, but it doesn't have nearly the smoothness of action as the liner lock does. The next burger knife I have is the EXK. It has a blade that's two and three quarters inch long. It weighs 3.6 ounces. It also uses M390 steel. This is one of my favorite fidget toys. If you guys don't have a front flipper, you need one because I could just play with this all day. It is a barrel of monkeys. Really excellent, really smooth action. I'm just going to shake, flip it out and then shake it down for you here. Yep, that's a great action, all right. The next knife, I can't tell you how much I really like this knife. It's made by um, Cody Etzler. It's called the Equalizer. The Equalizer has a 3-inch blade. Mine does. He makes it in different sizes. It weighs 4.3 ounces. The steel is CTS XHP. 
This he made specially for me. He anodized this, this kind of dark bronze color. The thumb stud, the pivot, and the standoffs are made of uh, zirconium. And oh, it's just a great knife and flips great. Look how beautiful that grind is on that blade. Oh, I really like this blade. It's one of my favorite knives I have. I like it so much I'm, a, I'm afraid to carry it. The next knife is a CH3001. It has a three and a quarter inch blade. It weighs three ounces. Uh, this one is made of D2 steel, although they make it in an OS 8 also, I'm told. And this knife uh, is great because it's Chinese made, it's very inexpensive. You can get it for about $50 uh, on DH Gate. And it has a smooth, smooth Shirogorov like shutting action. So if you want, uh, a really great knife with a great action. You can get one of these CH3001s and pay about $50 for it and you get the, the feel of what a great action looks like. The next knife is the Clyde Chalinor Talon. It has a three and a quarter inch blade, weighs 3.9 ounces, uses M390 steel. Love this knife. It has a carbon fiber inlays. It has this reverse Tonto-like blade. The thumb hole is designed to look like the eye of a raptor. It has these proprietary pivots that you can use a flat screwdriver in. Uh, it has a ceramic ball that acts as a bumper pad on the clip so you don't scratch up your clip. It is perfection, the action on this thing. He's a South African maker and it's a really great knife. The next knife is a NCC knife, Nick Chuprin, and uh, it is a super knife also. This is called the MK Micro. Its blade is 2.55 inches. It weighs 2.7 ounces. The steel is CTS XHP. And uh, this was a custom that he made, or you at least get to customize it. You go in, you tell what kind of blade treatment you want, the handle colors and anodizing. You can get the clip blackened out. And so this is a really fun, small knife. Okay, we're getting into the Chris Reeves now. This is the Sabenz in carbon fiber. And uh, what hasn't been said about the Sabenz? It's a great knife. It's the grail for everyone. This is the small 21 Sabenz in carbon fiber. It has a 2.94 inch blade, 2.2 ounces, uses S35 VN steel. And next we have the carbon fiber in Kosi. It has a larger pivot than the Sabenza. They canted sideways the clip so that it rests on the frame and the uh, uh, lockup, the detent ball is at the end there so the, the detent ball, the ceramic detent ball locks up against the blade tang and so there are the improvements that were made on the Encosi over the Sabenza. This is a great knife and I liked it so much I have two of them. The, the full titanium came out but the knife art came out with a special carbon fiber version so I had to get that too. And my last Chris Reeve knives is the Menandi. This is done in Gabon ebony uh, wood, and it is a great gentleman's carry. And I am going a little long on this video, and I'm running out of light, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. This is part one of the House of Wisdom collection, and so like and subscribe. I'll be trying to get up part two and three in a little bit, and... Hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Give it a thumbs up if you've been waiting for me to do this. And we'll see you on the next House of Wisdom video. Mm -hmm.